You're watching a Wayback Scraper tutorial video. The Wayback Scraper helps you download content that's been archived by the Wayback machine. So the first thing you need is a domain to do your search for. Next you have the date range of content to be pulled from. If you leave these two boxes empty, it's going to retrieve every URL in Wayback Machine's archive. You might want to set a date range if you want to retrieve less URLs or you want content that's newer. For this example, I'm going to leave the date range blank. Next, we have the include URL and the exclude URL text boxes. This is what you can use to filter out URLs that you don't want to be downloaded to your hard drive. To demonstrate how this works, let's go and click on the retrieve URLs button first. What this button does is it makes a call to the Wayback Machine and using the selection and a domain name, pulls all the results in the archive. So we can see that it's returned 875 URLs. Some of these we may not want. For example, let's say anything within the WordPress content folder we don't want to download. You can actually use the exclude URL. And if I click retrieve URLs again, you see now we've got 245. As we scroll up, I notice that the target site has a port 80 onto it, which might mean I get duplicate results. So I don't want that as well. So let's do 80 and click retrieve URLs. Now to add extra items to this exclude URL list, you're going to have to add a comma between each item. Now looking down, let's say there are URLs that I want to save. And in this example, I want anything with the word content in it. So if I use the include URL filter, it's only going to keep URLs with content in, in it. And anything that's in the exclude will run after this. So let's say we're happy with these results. Now there are two buttons here. I can export this list to my clipboard. I can also export this to a file. Next we have some content filtering. So any content that is downloaded to the hard drive, I can run a regex replace. I can remove all HTML and I can choose to wrap lines in arbitrary text or tags. Moving on, we have task settings. Here you see the task name. This is the worker count. When we are downloading content from Wayback Scraper, it's going to set five threads to run simultaneously. And this speeds up the amount of content that can be downloaded at once. We have our save location. If we need to schedule this task to run at specific intervals, we can do this here in the scheduler. After this is done, we can choose to run another task afterwards. I'm going to click on run now. With the task set to waiting, it's now scheduled to run. When it starts running, you can click on the task to find the task log here. And now we get a log of items that it's downloading and its progress. With the magic of editing, our task is now completed. As we hover over this blue icon, we have preview article, locate and copy path. I'm going to click on the locate button so you can see what's been downloaded on my hard drive. So this is the hard drive. You can see everything's been saved under the domain name. And this is what I chose to download everything in the content folder. And as I expand it, you can see all my images have been included. Even found some JavaScript files and some CSS files. You can take this content here and uh, you can process it as you require. If you have any questions, seocontentmachine.com.